Welcome to Conversations with Chuck Hester, a weekly podcast designed to inform, entertain, and introduce you to some really interesting and inspiring people. Today's episode is brought to you by Market Muse, the content platform where you can publish fearlessly using content intelligence. I'm your host, Chuck Hester. My guest today is one of my favorite people, and that's Lori Marrero, a Wall Street Journal bestselling author, an award-winning marketer, and an executive coach. She has significant experience in sales, marketing, and communications, and she's also an accomplished speaker, trainer, and advisor to boards, CEOs, and executives. Currently, Lori serves as Chief Marketing Officer and Managing Partner of Solid Leaders. She delivers executive advice and coaching to C-suite and SMB executives, helping individuals and companies scale. Lori, welcome. Thank you. Thank what you. a marvelous introduction. Yeah, for, for full disclosure, like when CBS says we're part of Viacom or whatever, full disclosure here, Lori Marrero happens to not only be part of the Pay It Forward Five, but she's also my executive coach. So, um, and it has brought my business along faster than I could possibly have imagined. And I greatly appreciate what you have done. So, uh, with that and that term, executive coach, Lori, tell us what's an executive coach? I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that talk about being a coach, a personal coach or branding coach or whatever it may be. What's an executive coach and what does that entail? Thank you. Thank you so much for the question because this is such a misunderstood term. So a uh, coach is such an easy entry point for someone to start a business. They can just say that they're a coach. Uh, but a really effective coach is going to be well-trained and there are different avenues that you can go down in the coaching field. So executive coaching specializes in high executives, high level executives who are leaders. And the whole point here is it's, you know, also called leadership coaching. Um, but that is that there are unique issues around leading, especially very large groups of people. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, you know, some of these books on leadership where they talk about the um, immutable or the irrefutable laws of leadership. I think that was, um, who was that? The, uh, I can't remember the guy who wrote that book, but anyway, the, the first law of it was there's the law of the lid. So you will only ascend to a certain point in your ability to lead, and then you're going to hit this lid, the ceiling. And so what happens is people hit that, and then they need to push through that, and they need to work through it and uh, be able to grow and, and grow their business. Uh, but yeah, and then there's business coaching, which is a little different. So business coaching could be more on the consultative side. Um, usually with executive coaching, we stay a little bit more into the Socratic method of asking questions and leading people to their own answers. Um, but we certainly wear a lot of hats. In fact, we we wear seven different hats. We've kind of counted one time. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, cheer, cheerleading and, and advising and all these things that we do. So uh, hopefully that's a thorough answer. No, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I mean, you, you and I have talked because we, we, uh, we do a session about every two weeks or so. And, you know, you have your notes as, okay, last time we talked about this, what are you doing on that? And I evoke your name on a regular basis when I'm having conversations with folks, particularly, and you and I met actually through Lunch Club. Um, and and that's we'll talk about that in a little bit as well, because I think it's one of the best networking platforms next to LinkedIn that you can find. But a lot of the times uh, people, you know, we start the conversation on Lunch Club or a LinkedIn Zoom call, whatever it may be. And it's OK. So tell me more about who you are. I usually start that out by saying I am. I do three things. Can't do more than three things because my coach won't let me do more than three things. And that's kind of the bottom line. And, you know, yes, there are subsets to it. And by the way, just for our viewers, my three things are marketing, communications, consulting, LinkedIn training and this podcast. I mean, that's kind of the bottom line. And part of that podcast is the pay it forward initiative that I do as well. Uh, but there can be subsets of that. Like with this podcast, I promote it and work on a website and all the good stuff that goes along with that. But so um, I guess my, my, there is a question in there somewhere. It's more of a comment as far as that goes. Uh, and by the way, folks, Lori and I, before we got on air, talked about the fact that we'll try to keep it to 45 minutes because once we get on a Zoom call, um, we can't stop. I mean, that's kind of the bottom line on that. And we're, and that's maybe the point I was trying to make there is anytime I have a conversation with you, I can be in the worst mood in the, in that day. And I know for, I look at my calendar and say, oh, okay, great. I've got some time with Lori or Leslie V. August, who's a good friend of ours. And it's like, okay, I'm going to be lifted up. And that's, that's kind of the bottom line on that. And evoking another guy, uh, Jeff Nishwitz, who, who we both know. Uh, and his, his phrase the other day was, 
you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, my phrase on that is if you are want to be uplifted, uplift others first. So that's kind of the bottom line on that. Mm. So as an executive coach, you're, you're kind of the confidant, the, you know, like you said, the cheerleader, there's seven different hats. Um, how do you get started with, with an executive coach? What's, what's the process to do that? Yeah, we often start with a complimentary session. So that's something that I'd love to op offer to the viewers. Um, we do a lot of assessments and we do a lot of consultation up front to, you know, first of all, orient people to coaching. Um, and then we want to find out what your goals are. So those first couple of sessions are like that. Uh, and then once we know what the goals are, we know exactly what path to take. So we have um, at Solid Leaders, we have a huge curriculum. Uh, so I should mention my business partner, Daniel Mueller, I am so fortunate to work with him as my partner. He has over 30 years of experience in executive coaching, which is very unusual. Um, he was one of the people that was around before this actually had a name. Mm -hmm. So he would do consulting gigs and he would write these huge reports of, oh, here's what you need to do in this company and give him this giant binder. And he calls it credenza wear because <laughs> it would just go on the shelf and they wouldn't do anything with it. And so he was really frustrated with that and said, you yeah, know, I really, I want you to implement what I've, you know, given you here. So then he started creating this way of, you know, all right, let's meet together every other week or every week. And let's just let me coach you through this. Right. So he was there at the birth of the industry, literally. So over all those years, he's developed all this curriculum. So when people um, give us a goal of, you know, actually want to find a new position. So career coaching is something we do a lot of. Um, then we go, okay, great. Let's go down this path. We have a uh, resume models that we're going to coach you through. We're going to help you edit your resume. We're going to get an executive bio together. Um, the really, you know what, let me back up here and just say this, Chuck, there are kind of three phases of executive coaching, if you will. So there's this career coaching phase where you're looking for a new position and then you get it. And the next phase would be onboarding coaching. So you, you've got the new role, you need to be as effective as possible, and you need to know how to manage those first critical 100 days. Um, and then the third phase would be just the leadership coaching so that you um, get more effective and grow as a leader. So we take people through all those phases as ex executives. Um, for business owners, it's a little bit different because you're not going to be looking for a job with a resume per se, but it's uh, it's still all the same issues of leadership. Um, anyway, there you go. I could go on yeah. forever. Sorry. No, you, no you're doing great. <laughs> yeah. And, and honestly, I mean, like I said, and, and we'll talk about this, uh, you know, one of our subjects that we said we were going to talk about is pivoting. Uh, there's been a lot of folks, honestly, I've been a LinkedIn speaker trainer, Marcom guy for uh, LinkedIn speaker for 15 years, Marcom guy for 41 um, and this, the, the COVID blessing that I, I talk about is my first four clients were either coaches or, uh, you know, and had pivoted out of other, other positions. I had never before, it was always B2B tech execs is who I was working with. Um, now, you know, you were one of my clients, uh, Leslie's one of my clients, uh, you know, a bowling initiative, uh, consultants, uh, law firms, those type of things are coming about. Uh, as far as that goes. So it's kind of interesting to see how that works. And I think maybe just from the 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 general perspective, if you will, I think the emphasis here needs to, to make sure the folks know that you're an executive coach, meaning you work with business owners and executives, not necessarily, you know, I got laid off because of COVID, so I need a coach to, to walk me through. You're not a job coach per se, but I mean, that that's part of what you end up doing. So just want to want to clarify that as well. Um, and, and, you know, viewers get used to it because, you know, the accolades are going to come on a regular basis in this conversation for Lori and what she's done and what she, what we have done together and paid forward uh, and the initiative there as well. Um, but one of the nice things about that, and I, I guess I'll ask it this way, are there specific industries that you specialize in as far as executive coaching? Hmm. Uh, not particularly. It's it's a mishmash, and uh, I enjoy that. Um, I I have had such a foot in the, you know, uh, speaker author expert world for a long time. I I have a lot of those connections. So I guess if anything, I have more of those kinds of people that I work with. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, yeah, I mean, I guess we should talk about my background. I have such a non traditional path to coaching, yeah, yeah. and especially pivoting. And you know, I wanted to point out there's there's a distinction between pivoting and reinvention. 
Very and uh, so I have done a huge pivot before. We could talk about that. And then I feel like for me, the coaching is almost like a reinvention, or at least it's a it's a very major pivot <laughs> for yeah, me. Absolutely. From where I came yeah, from. And, and, and before we head that direction, though, I wanted to make sure, you know, one of the things that the, the you and I have an affinity is because of your marketing background. And so you understand what I'm talking about. OK, I need to you know work on the funnel and you know, work on a web, whatever it may be. You understand that. Uh, and he's lack of a better way to put that. You, you speak my language, but you brought it up before I get a chance to. So, uh, you know, pivoting is, is uh, I, I was talking to somebody the other day and I said, you know, if dictionary.com comes out with a word for 2020, it's going to be pivot. Uh, there's no doubt about it because there's a lot of pivoting going on. I think, quite frankly, you you and I have had this conversation in a very positive, what I call COVID blessing way, meaning that there's folks finding their talents, finding their passions, and now really kind of almost forced to, as a result of a COVID layoff or whatever it may be, reinvent, not reinventing themselves per se, but pivoting in such a way that they're doing what they really want to do. I'm a perfect example of that. You know, as far as, as what's going on with that. So let's start with your background, Lori, because I, you know, I know for a fact you, you had uh, at one point in time a very viable business in regards to clutter, lack of a better way to put that. But give us some give us some background. You know, the bio is one thing, but you talking about who you are and what you do previously before you came into this area, uh, it, I think it'll be very enlightening for the, for the listeners and the viewers. <laughs> okay, well, kind of a fun story. Right. Uh, well, I started in the year 2000 as a professional organizer. So a lot of people have heard that term. There's now TV shows about all of that. Uh, but I had a team here in Austin and San Antonio, and we would do what you think. We'd be in people's closets and garages, and we would do filing systems for companies and things like that. Um, so the pivot story that I have is that I this was something that people would do this year for COVID, only I did it 15 years ago. Um, I decided that the in-person services business was too much, you know, work. It was, I've got to open another city now. Am I going to start licensing and franchising? It's just, it got really big. And so I learned about internet marketing and this was in 2005. Uh, and I heard about membership sites and I was inspired by Weight Watchers because I noticed that they were going online at that time. And oh, wow, you could do that online. I thought you had to go to a Weight Watchers place in person and have meetings and stuff like that. So I thought, you know, and then it just hit me. And this was something like, uh, you know, I'm on an airplane staring out the window and you know how your brain just kind of synthesizes something and you get this eureka moment. And I went, oh my goodness, the clutter diet. It's just like losing weight. I'm always telling clients that anyway, right? So I built this membership site and, uh, you know, a year later, there it was. I mean, I, I jumped off that plane and bought the URL in, in the airport. Uh, but yeah, that membership site became very successful. It was thousands of members in 18 countries around the world. Um, and then I was able to transition my in-person services business to my former employees who still continue to this day. And uh, yeah, it was just a whole new world. And, and since I was one of the very few people in the industry that actually had a national platform or international platform versus a small regional, you know, regional business, uh, it got the attention of, you know, everyone on social media. Social media was new, you know, Twitter was brand new. So about 2008, you know, I was on Twitter there as a kind of early adopter. So uh, I figured out that I could reach companies that way. So now it's different because, everybody's on board. But at that time, you could reach some pretty high level people in the company on Twitter because the marketing VP might be the one doing the Twitter. Uh, so I started, uh, you know, reaching out to companies and they saw what I was doing and what I was building and the platform that I had. So I was able to have amazing relationships with Rubbermaid and uh, Staples. I was a spokesperson for them. I was a spokesperson for uh, Goodwill uh, for eight years and they were my nonprofit partner. Uh, so it was just an amazing adventure. I just never, ever dreamed that I would do all of those things with that idea. Wow. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things that came to mind when when we were talking and you've talked to me about this to a certain extent is the term, I, I hate trite phrases, but it's a good phrase, analysis paralysis, which basically means I'm going to think about it and I'm going to plan it and I'm going to get it, you know, and then, then I'll get it done. It's like my favorite yeah. aspect of that is, you know, we've got really good, good colleagues who are website developers who always say, just put it up and then we'll make changes as we go along. Um, I think that translates into the pivot, if you will, or what are you doing in your business and, and how can you move forward? Just try it, do it, make changes and do whatever. 
I mean, conversations with Chuck Hester is a great example. You know, this is a work in progress as we move along. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I see that. So you went from, the, was it the clutter queen? Is that what you were called? Or? <laughs> no. You can call me that, Chuck, if you want. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, the Clutter Diet was the okay. program. So clutterdiet.com. It, there's still a page up there that just says we're closed or something. But um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we, I, we, I we that. totally decluttered. We're no longer there. What type of yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah, no, after 17 years of that. So there's so that was the pivot. And then the reinvention was after 17 years of that. Um, you can only say so much about closets, honestly. There's not a lot of innovation in closets. It's kind of like, I already made over 300 videos. They're still on YouTube if you want to watch them. Uh, but, you know, there's so much to do and say, and I really had conquered all the mountains I wanted to conquer in that industry. And I knew that I needed to kind of redo the site and there was some capital I was going to need to put into it. And I thought, oh, I just can't muster, you know? And, and, and this is the this is the lesser told story about small business is that, you know, you love to hear about the rocket ship hockey stick stories of the mm -hmm. entrepreneurial growth, but it doesn't always turn out that way. And it's not always a failure. I had a really lovely kind of bell curve ride where I had this amazing peak and did great and it was still fine, but it started to decline. And I saw that and I thought, well, I can either throw a bunch more money and energy into this, or I can listen to my heart that's been telling me for a couple of years that I might want to move on and I can just make a big decision here and close it. So I did, and I was able to sell, like I had products in the container store. So I was able to sell that physical product wow. to, to a buyer. Uh, and yeah, I just kind of wound it all down. And um, all along though, knowing that really I was a coach and I knew this from very, very early on. Um, mm. so I would be sitting in a closet with somebody and they had, you know, five identical sweaters that they'd purchased and most of them still had the tags left on <laughs> and it was just never about the stuff. Right. So I would be asking them questions. Well, why did you buy the sweaters? Well, when did you buy this one? And why did you not know that you had this one? And, you know, starting to dig and, you know, the Socratic method and then leading them to this place where they realized, oh, I have a compulsive, sh compulsive shopping problem. Maybe I'm not really happy, you know, and, and we would go to these places where I just I was really almost doing therapy, you know, uh, in the closets. Uh, and so I, I pretty quickly realized that I was in the personal change business, the coaching business and not really the organizing business. Um, so all along, I'd been getting training and going that direction. So it was nice to reinvent uh, as officially as a coach, you know, at this point. And, when, and what year was that that you actually moved over to becoming a professional coach? Uh, 2017. Okay. So, so, yeah. I'm glad you did. I greatly appreciate that aspect of it as well. <laughs> so you know, before we leave the, the, the topic of coaching and executive coaching in particular, I guess this is probably a, maybe a softball question, but who's a good candidate to, to actually use an executive coach? Is there a criteria that makes sense for somebody saying, you know, to the point where they go, oh, okay, because I, I meet these particular criteria, I need an executive coach. Is there is there a criteria? Yeah, because number one, you have to be coachable. You know, you have Ooh. to be open to learning. You have to be open to hearing feedback that might be uncomfortable. Uh, one of the things that we start digging into pretty quickly is blind spots. So we use assessments. I have a ton of different assessments that we use to just dig and find, you know, what do you not know about yourself? What are you not seeing about yourself that might need to be corrected or adjusted? Um, so the biggest criteria is being coachable. And I, I think that is, uh, uh, that rules out a lot of people, honestly. <laughs> so, um, you know, people that want to grow, people who like learning, uh, that's really what we're looking for. And then in our case, we, we prefer to work with um, directors, VPs, or, or C-suite, uh, as far as the level in the company, because that's where the higher levels of leadership start to become a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've talked a little bit about solid leaders and what you do in general, but um, now's your chance. And I always do this with, with my guests. Uh, tell us more about solid leaders, how they can get in touch with you and, and what they will will learn and, and uh, enjoy working with you guys. Well, first, I want to say as a marketing person, we are redoing our website and this website preceded me that's up on, on the, uh, the web right now. So solidleaders.com right now is uh, an old website. So I'm redoing it. Just stay tuned. Watch this space <laughs> 
for an improved version. Uh, but what we can do for everybody right now is we can do a free disk assessment. So that's one of my favorites and it's simple. It takes five to seven minutes to take the assessment. And then I offer a 30 minute uh, interpretation session for free um, so that you can understand what this all means. And then you can get your questions answered about coaching and no pressure. It's just a fun session. And I would love to get to know people if they're interested in doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, very cool. Um, so it's talk to, you know, I think, I think Lori, you know, you're an amazing person and I'll tell you what, I can promise you anybody that, that, uh, that takes that first assessment with you has that first phone call. Um, best way to describe it, it the, you're, you're kind of hooked. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You know, I call it the, the end cap of marketing for, for me, for my 15 minute LinkedIn, you know, let's have a conversation, uh, those type of things. And the ones that are really going to be open to being, it's a good way to put it coachable uh, for me as well. Uh, are going to sign up on a spot. We've talked about that for me personally, uh, as yes. far as that goes. But I think, you know, once you get a chance to have a one-on-one -on -one with Lori, and as opposed to just listening to this interview, uh, you you will be hooked for life. There's no doubt about that. So I uh, greatly appreciate that aspect of it. Um, so, you know, the conversations can go on as far as just coaching or whatever, but I really want to, I, I think for a change, I was going to head in a different direction, but I'd like to go to the pay it forward minute. I think that kind of makes sense. And let's talk mm -hmm. some about, uh, and, and look, I even got a banner. There we go. Um, oh. So yeah, so we can make that work. Um, but I want to talk to you, to you in particular. Um, and maybe what I do here, Lori, is that we can have a quick conversation in regards to who we are, what we do in regards to the pay it forward uh, initiative that started uh, so I'll give a quick introduction and I'd love to have you talk about, uh, you know, how you're working with the folks you're working with, what it means to you. Uh, there was a podcast that Adam Sinkis, one of our partners, did uh, where you were not available. And, and so the, I'm going to ask some of the questions that Adam did, basically, as far as that goes. Okay. So okay. for those of you who don't know, and if you're following me, you sure probably do. But uh, Adam Sinkis and myself and, and several other people who I'll mention in a minute uh, started an initiative called the Pay It Forward Tuesdays Initiative. And this is a shout out to Rosanna Berardi, excuse me, an immigration lawyer who was one of my clients who found out that, you know, hey, December 2020, uh, of all things, has five Tuesdays. One Tuesday is the Giving Tuesday. That's the first one. Then there's four other opportunities to pay it forward is how Rosanna put it. So she was looking for charities and, and basically doing donations for those four Tuesdays. Adam and I got together and said, OK, we're all consultants that we know. Uh, why don't you as a web designer and marketing person, Adam, and me as a LinkedIn trainer, why don't we offer 30 minutes of free training? Which, by the way, um, a lot of us were doing pro bono work once a month anyway. I mean, it was just kind of our deal to pay it forward. Um, in the process of, we thought about Lori, uh, Jennifer Radke came forward, who's with the uh, National Institute of Social Media, and one of my favorite PR guys, Bob Shears, came forward as well. So we became the pay it forward five. And we selected four different organizations and people. Uh, actually, it was, it's interesting. It was two people and two charities is how it ended up being working out. Uh, that we have provided two and a half hours of free consulting to help their business or help their charity and move forward. And some really cool organizations. I mean, one of my favorites is Hunter Hoops, who runs Hoops Media. A, an interns eight months ago and now running his own own organization with interns. I think we like that. And, and the Horizon Foundation, which is based out of Austin, where you are. So, um, so, so Lori, now that now that that explanation has been been long winded to a certain extent, uh, talk to me about how you know how this has affected you. What it, what do you what have you gotten out of this? Number one, and you know what do you see moving forward? Well, I've gotten out of it an opportunity to, first of all, meet incredible people and to be able to help, you know, and, and that's the the challenges, you know, I'm, I'm with clients all day and it's, you know, they're paying clients and companies and, you know, I, I really want to um, be able to give back as well. So this is giving me that, that uh, time slot where I'm like, okay, this is give back time, you know, and I just get to just pour myself into uh, whatever that person needs. So it's been fun also to see the nominees come through. Um, I've enjoyed just the promotion we've been able to do on LinkedIn and just getting the word out about what these people are doing. So Thea, for example, um, Horizon Music Foundation, 
Um, so she is trying to help women in the music industry. Well, she needs visibility to that, you know, so we're able, able to give that to our recipients. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome. And I think this is a good place for us to talk about it, too. Um, the Pay It Forward 5, as we've called ourselves, we've decided to continue to pay it forward Tuesdays into 2021. And we will select a new recipient for the third Tuesday of every month in 2021. Um, so as, as you mentioned, we do nominees. And that's how we found, I believe, we actually found all four of the the nominees came from folks who uh, who were suggested them to us. Um, so if you know somebody that you think would be a good nominee, get in touch with me through LinkedIn or Lori or any one of the folks that uh, that's part of the Pay It Forward Five. And again, that's Adam Sinkis, Jennifer Radke, Bob Shears, and Lori Marrero. But the other part of this initiative, which I'm really excited about uh, and we're working through, uh, if you are a company or organization that provides products and services to small business and entrepreneur community, we want to talk to you because you can participate in Pay It Forward Tuesdays as well, because we're looking for sponsors that can provide services and products in kind for our 2021 recipients. Great way to pay it forward while building brand equity in your community. One of my favorite uh, speeches that I give on a regular basis and being able to say what we're calling Pay It Forward Perks. So somebody gets nominated, they get two and a half hours of, of, uh, of consulting time and without shouting out names too much, but, and now here's a gift certificate to the UPS store or a year's worth of GoDaddy services or whatever it may be. Or in this case, for instance, Market Muse, my sponsor is actually going to be contributing as well. Uh, and we move forward and Jennifer Radke, who runs the, uh, the National Institute of, of Social Media is going to be uh, donating a, a course for them to take to become certified in social media as well, if it's appropriate for what they do. So anyway, long story short, that's what we look at. And I would be remiss and, you know, I'll shout out LinkedIn in that they're very careful about making sure this isn't a commercial or a or LinkedIn uh, chips minutes, if you will. But Lori, talk to me about your use of LinkedIn, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be very commercial here, prior to meeting me, uh, and, and, and what you have done since then, and how it's made a difference for you in regards to your personal practice, plus uh, the solid leaders practice as well. Well, I have a lot of credit to give to you, Chuck, and I'm very happy to do that. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to off the was... screen. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I was, uh, I'm just going to call myself a refugee from social media hell or something. <laughs> Cause I am after, like I said, those early <laughs> adopter years in Twitter and then just, you know, growing all of that Facebook, Instagram, all this stuff. And especially YouTube, I was really on YouTube a lot. I got tired of the treadmill that I was on and I was kind of done. I was like, what is the minimum I have to do? Because it's just a lot, you know? So after all those years of doing it, you know, so I, I met you and I was kind of using LinkedIn and just starting to warm up to it thinking, you know, okay, I can, I can embrace LinkedIn because it's not crazy now. Like I feel like the other platforms have gotten so, oh, it's just everybody's highlight reel and cat pictures and all that. Like I just can't, it's too much input for me. So I wanted LinkedIn to be this strictly business kind of place that I could really um, have more fun with. Uh, so when I met Chuck, I was just getting into that and I was not, I didn't know what I didn't know. <laughs> so he helped me just analyze my profile, what was missing um, and helped me just understand what each part of the profile was for uh, and helped me optimize that. And so that's been great. And then I've been pretty good at putting some content out. I didn't want to get back entirely on the treadmill, but I've been great about that and just sharing, you know, sharing what Chuck does and other friends and uh, yeah, it's made a huge difference. So now I'm about to kick it up another notch with LinkedIn and, and really getting into sales navigator and using that a little bit more for business development. Uh, so yeah. everybody work with Chuck. It's so yeah. much fun. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily for that aspect of it, but I appreciate that. But you know, the interesting part, I, I remember like it was yesterday and I probably have, the message on LinkedIn or somewhere where you came forward and said, I do not want to do content ever again. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's what is basically what you said to me. And I said, well, you know, there's ways to do that without going crazy on it. And, you know, cobbler's children and I am, I don't have a before or after, but I do have the after of what your profile looks like. Um, but you know what, you, you evoked a phrase, which I'll probably get end up using because I'm redoing 
uh, we always learn. I'm redoing my introduction within my LinkedIn profile. And one of the things is you don't necessarily know what you don't know until you find out here's what you should be doing. So it's that type of comments that that really makes a difference as far as that goes. So um, I, I appreciate that. Lori, this is this has been a pleasure and we're going to we're going to wrap up in a few minutes, but always like to give folks opportunities to uh, get a chance to be in touch with you. And um, I'm going to put solid leaders back up here again. But tell tell the audience what's the best way to get in touch with you uh, and, and how they can work with you. Well, certainly you're probably watching this on LinkedIn. So you can just click and just send me a message on LinkedIn. That's probably the very easiest thing. If you do want to do the free disc assessment, you can go to solidleaders.com slash Lori, my name, L-O-R-I-E, free disc, D-I-S-C, Lori free disc. That'll get you there. Sounds good. Lori, I appreciate the time. I'm going to, we're going to wrap up here. Uh, but this, this, by the way, just some, some, uh, some housekeeping notes, if you will. This is our live broadcast right now that you're watching. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel that uh, that is available for you to subscribe to, and you can get a chance to take a look at all of the cool episodes. This is episode number eight, believe it or not, um, that, that we just started two months ago. So having a ball doing that and being able to walk that through. Uh, but again, Lori, I, I appreciate your time. Uh, it, it is always a pleasure to have a conversation with you. So thanks for being on Conversations with Chuck Hester. Thank you. And same to you. Love talking to Chuck. <laughs> there you go. I appreciate that. All right. So that's another edition of uh, LinkedIn Conversations. Conversations with Chuck Hester. That used to be my old one. Uh, Conversations with Chuck Hester. Uh, and I want to make sure that that I shout out my sponsor. And this has been brought to you by Market Muse. It's the publish fierce, fearlessly using content intelligence. You can get started with a free trial or use code Hester15, that's probably the first time I've seen that code, for 15% off at select packages at marketmuse.com. So thank you for uh, the continued sponsorship as far as that goes, guys, and I greatly appreciate that. Uh, and next week, on January 13th, another amazing person is going to be my guest, and that is Eric McCarrier. He is the startup and product coach. He is co-founder with five exits, one IPO, and four acquisitions, talking about what it's like to be a startup in this particular environment. So uh, please, please feel free to share the podcast with your friends and connections. The replay will, as I mentioned, will post very soon on Facebook and my YouTube channel. Also through Anchor FM, you can listen to the audio of the podcast and it can be found on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and many other channels. And I would be remiss if I didn't say, if you're interested in learning more about how you can improve your marketing or LinkedIn presence, you can contact me on LinkedIn, my favorite place, mention this podcast for a free 15 minute discovery call. And right now ask me about the 21 for 21 special. That's 21% off my one-on-one -on -one LinkedIn training through January 21st, 2021. Can't say that often. That's it for this week. So until next time, this is Chuck Hester telling you to stay well, stay connected, always pay it forward.